Hello. This video is going to explain how people define development in different ways. This is part of the edXLA global development topic and this is the first lesson that you um, would be studying of this topic. Okay, just a really quick link to the specification. It's really important that we understand development as being more than just economic data, so something like GDP. It also involves a range of different indicators that we're going to look at today that, that affect social well-being and political freedoms. We're also going to consider the impact of cultural development on particular countries and we're going to look at some examples of developing, emerging and developed countries today and compare different statistics relating to these countries. So first of all, cultural development is the first one I wanted to talk about because this is slightly harder to define than other types of development. What it involves is essentially giving people a place, a sense of well-being because they feel like they have a place in the country that they live in. So if their lives are affected by, say, um, racism or by um, not being able to access work because of the le levels of education that they have, or maybe they're discriminated against in this way, this would mean that that country, um, where the, that person was experiencing um, that type of discrimination, um, was less developed and is considered less developed because not everyone has fair access to, say, work or social care. Another example of this is Sweden, where they have gone beyond traditional beliefs about women being the main caregiver in a, in a family, and they allow for 16 months of shared um, parental leave. So that means that men and women um, can look after their baby and they can also get paid at the same time. So they get 80% of their wages. So this, this allows for women to not be the only, the primary caregiver when it comes to raising a baby. And that, that means they can work um, and it makes a country, again, more developed as a result. Social development is the next one. So this involves anything which... Um, again, affects someone's well-being and quality of life. So this could be something to do with health, education, housing, um, equal opportunities to education and work and work experience, um, and even things like leisure and recreation. So having, um, for example, uh, green spaces where everyone can access um, nice playgrounds and open spaces to enjoy and, and feel healthy. Um, the example, I, uh, the main example I wanted to give you was um, the Oxfam, uh, a huge Oxfam project where they are building a 100 kilometer water pipeline in the Democratic Republic of Congo. And this is a very poor country in, in Central Africa that's experienced um, a lot of devastating civil war um, and um, issues that, that have arisen after they um, gained independence from um, Belgium um, as, a, as a colony. Um, so this is gonna give people in the DRC in remote places and rural places, safe um, and, and regular access to water, which lots of people, millions of people in that country do not have yet. Economic development, um, we often think of this in relation to um, GDP, so gross domestic product. This is the value of goods and services um, sold within a country. So that involves um, people's um, work they do, the type of work they do. And it also involves um, goods that we maybe manufacture and export to other countries. So that means trading with other countries. And you can see in the photo that there are lots of containers um, with these goods in. And this is a container port. Political development is essentially giving everyone in the country the freedom to um, vote on the way that their country is run um, and the, the leaders that will represent them in the running of, um, of their country. 
if people are um, restricted from voting, maybe there's unfair voting practices um, in countries where maybe they're trying to swing votes, like Zimbabwe, where Robert Mugabe has been, um, uh, was the dictator for a very many number of years. Um, they tried to rig votes by stuffing um, boxes with, with fake voting papers. This would mean a country was, was not developed because they were not giving people the freedom to vote. The other main example I wanted to talk to talk about is the Women's Equality Party in the UK. So it's the Women's Equality Party was started not that long ago and it's re representing women's issues within politics and this is a perfect example of in our country we have the freedom to start political parties and to be part of political parties we think represent our values. So um, if you want to you should um, have a look look up the women's equality party in the uk many people haven't um lots of people haven't heard of it okay pause the video and i'd like you to identify which definition links to a particular type the four types of development we've looked at those types of development are cultural development social development economic development and political development I'll read through the definitions if you'd like um, to hear them, otherwise skip this part of the video and um, read through them yourself. Anything that directly impacts the well-being of an individual in society, improving their quality of life and allowing them to achieve their full potential, e.g. literacy through greater access to education. Second one, freedom for people to have greater say in who governs their country, Third one, an increase in the country's wealth, which relates to the types of jobs people have, e.g. low wage jobs in the primary sector like farming and the value of goods exported out of the country. The fourth one, fourth and final one, this could involve going beyond traditional culture to allow women to work or creating better work-life balance by making sure employers monitor how many hours their employees work in a day. Okay, I'll reveal the answers now. First one is social development. The second was political development. The third, economic development. And the fourth, cultural development. So well done if you got all four of those right. The second part of this lesson, I would like us to consider what factors have helped or hindered a country from developing. So what um, so, for example, you might have economic factors like um, really um, the government building ports um, or, or good road networks in their country, which allows for more trade to happen. This would help a country's development. And we're going to look at different measurements of um, these factors. Um, and these, again, these could be economic, social, technological, cultural um, and and also related to food and water security. The definition of food security is um, access to enough food for the whole population of the country. And water security, again, means access to enough water for the population. So access meaning if there's a water pump in your village, is, it, is there lots of queues um, to that water pump? This might be in uh, a country um, like Uganda in East Africa. Uh, is that water safe to drink? Do you have to boil it to be able to um, then cook with it or, or, um, or use it to clean yourself? Um, that would be water, water um, a way of looking at water security. Food security could also mean um, the, uh, the cost of food. So is it affordable to everyone in the country? Okay, the first two countries we're gonna compare are Norway, and the Democratic Republic of Congo. So remember Norway from the start of the, the, um, of the lesson, we looked at their cultural development and um, their use of paternal, paternity leave. Um, so that means men being able to take, um, being able to take uh, leave when they have a baby so that the women can also, women can also work. The DRC, we looked at the water pipeline that, um, that the, uh, the Oxfam were building to try and help um, people in rural areas have access to water, safe water. So um, think about looking at this data, which factors have helped 
a country like Norway develop, but hindered a country like the DRC from developing. You can pause the video if you'd like to, or again, I will read through um, the indicators that are on the screen. So the index of political and economic freedom um, has lots of different measures within this index. It looks at, um, for example, people's ability to um, pay, uh, um, fairly pay taxes and like council tax. So is that done in a fair way across the country? They even look at things um, like who is allowed to become a politician. So what access, uh, what sort of uh, freedom is there for people to become part of political parties and represent political parties? So Norway is considered free, whereas the DRC is considered not free on many, many different levels. The food security index, with that is again access to food for the whole population. Um, Norway is ranked seventh out of 113 countries, so they are the seventh most food secure country in the world. DRC is the 103rd least food secure country in the world, so they are it's considered DRC that many people cannot access safe and affordable food. Okay, so have a think in your head or pause the video. Um, which factors have helped Norway develop and which factors have hindered DRC from developing? So Norway has a very stable government, which means that they can make laws easily. They can bring in different social programs um, to do with education and health. We need that for a country to be able to develop. They also have affordable and safe access to food. This is also um, relating to how much money people earn in the country. So it's affordable to Norwegians. OK, so if you visited Norway, um, well, it's cost of living is slightly different. But yeah, they have affordable and safe access to food. The DRC is a very politically corrupt um, country. Um, so they they had um, a dictator called um, Mobutu for a very long time um, who uh, took advantage of the sort of um, the money that the government earned and, and he took money from um, from the country bought lots of expensive clothes in Paris was a very po corrupt leader um, food insecurity again in the DRC means that um, people cannot work. They cannot um, necessarily, you know, if they get ill because they are, um, or their children get ill, sorry, because they are undernourished, that's going to cost um, a lot of money. And it might mean um, for, for um, treatment and to try and get that um, child well again. Um, it also means that um, if people are, are not well fed, they won't, they won't be able to work. They're not going to be um, healthy and able to kind of concentrate and work or even just do manual labor which a lot of people in the DRC do because they have a lot of people working in farming which is the primary sector. Okay next two countries are slightly different so South Africa is considered an emerging country this means their economy is um, changing in terms of the type of work people do. So they might have more people working in manufacturing, which is the secondary industry, or maybe working in office jobs where they've got a university degree, and this is the tertiary sector. Senegal is still a developing country, and you can see this, and, and you saw this in the last example examples, that their GDP, their gross domestic product, is much lower than South Africa's. So the two indicators I've presented for you for these two countries are water scarcity and girls finishing secondary school. So water scarcity in South Africa and Senegal are somewhat um, similar. Senegal being slightly more arid as it's near to the Sahara Desert um, and it's um, in this area of high pressure. If you remember from um, weather hazards and climate change, remembering these types of um, climate. Um, so think about if a country is water scarce, what impact will that have on people in the country? What impact will that have on the economy? Girls finishing secondary school, as you can see, are much lower for Senegal. So again, think about what impact that would have on, on, on a country like Senegal's development. OK, feel free to pause the video, go back a bit, look at those statistics again. But think about what factors have helped development in South Africa and what factors have hindered 
development in Senegal. So South Africa um, has a much higher GDP, um, meaning that the government can maybe solve water access um, issues in cities like Cape Town. So they might be able to um, uh, move water from one part of the country to another. They might be able to desalinate water, which you might remember from year nine means take the salt out of water from the sea, which is a very expensive and energy intensive process. They also have a much higher level of education for girls, as well as most people in the country, which means there'll be more job opportunities. More companies will want to invest in South Africa, move their uh, maybe banking, um, uh, banking services to South Africa. So the, these jobs um, in um, finance and law and any kind of new um, entrepreneurial um, type company maybe like uber might not want to move to a country that's very poor because they won't make money from um from being there but a country like south africa will have more more highly educated people that can buy their products and can then um you know use the services like in a bank or a law firm or an accountancy firm okay senegal um, is more water insecure. So this might lead to health issues for people if they cannot access safe water like dysentery. And this can also affect child mortality. Um, dysentery is, is a kind of um, gastro um, uh, illness. You can look it up if you're interested in it, if, you're, if you're biologic, your biology uh, medical interests um, uh, are in that area, but I won't describe it in too much um, depth. But yeah, dysentery and cholera are two issues um, that places with water insecurity um, face health issues. There are also low, very low levels of education for girls. So this means that almost, well, half the population of Senegal are undereducated. So it means that girls cannot work. They're not um, making money um, and spending it in the economy. It means that girls are um, essentially less economically active and they're unable to kind of develop in a social and in an economic way and so it really holds back the development of a country by not giving girls this access to education. Another emerging country we're going to study during this topic is India. So remember that term emerging country because it will come up in exam questions um, in, uh, in paper two. A map I wanted to show you that relates to um, that I just thought was an interesting um, kind of pattern showing development um, is um, is how many people in a country, how many young people finish secondary school. So that's the same level of education that you are accessing um, at Pimlico. So um, over 50% of young people in the dark dots on the screen um, cannot access um, education um, and secondary education so they are far less likely to get highly a higher paid job and be able to have a better quality of life as a result because they've not finished secondary school and if you're interested look up um, a world map of GDP and you'll see that the pattern is pretty similar to the one that you see on this map sub-saharan Africa places in Southeast Asia much lower GDP because they have lower levels of education Okay, final task, um, that again, you can pause for. I haven't got my pause symbol, but that's okay. You can pause. Um, I'd like you to identify two truths and a lie out of these three statements. So statement A is development is only measured using economic indicators. B, development can be measured using many different indicators. C, development is hard to define because quality of life is affected by many different factors. Okay, if you were, um, if you, if you were, um, well, if you're right, you would have said A is the lie, B is a truth, and C is a truth. Okay, I hope you found this lesson helpful, and, um, Keep going back to it. You can take notes if you need to, um, to sort of add to your notes from uh, that you will add to your notes before you start the lessons on development um, in September. But this is just to get give you a head start on what we'll be learning for this topic um, uh, in September. Okay, take care, everyone. <laughs>